Season 3 of The Mandalorian neatly wrapped up a lot of storylines set up by Season 1 and Season 2, but if there's one lingering question in mind is what exactly happened to Kane? After all, with Moff Gideon completely defeated, what exactly will become of the former communications officer? Given that she wasn't apprehended by the New Republic or wasn't exposed by any of our main characters, she definitely is still a player in the long term. And so, until Season 4 of The Mandalorian rolls around, we won't really know what she'll be up to. But what we can do is theorize as to what sort of nefarious plans she might be up to in between now and then. A possible role that she might play in the future is using her position as an Imperial spy to manipulate the Republic military leaders. Now as we see in Episode 5, Alaya Kane has started to use her influence and position to manipulate events and situations to the advantage of the Imperials. As such, what she could potentially do with this power and position is to foster New Republic and Mandalorian tensions. And I think this is an idea that was sort of hinted at in Episode 5 of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, with Karshan Deva discovering Beskar at the site of Moff Gideon's escape, and while the show ultimately didn't really take it far or explore this idea to a greater extent, I do think that it is an interesting plot point that could come into play later on. I think many of us expected the New Republic to show up in some way or form during the finale, but that ultimately didn't happen. Now knowing that Moff Gideon is permanently out of the picture and that Kane has no one left to report to, she might decide to take revenge on the Mandalorians for the demise of her boss by creating tensions between the New Republic and the Mandalorians. Now that the Mandalorians have essentially established themselves as a revived civilization and a galactic-wide faction, the New Republic would undoubtedly want to engage with them in dialogue. And this is perhaps where Kane can sort of step in and start to mess things up by creating false lies and tensions to exacerbate relations between the New Republic and the Mandalorians, pitting them against each other. And by putting them at odds with each other, she might hope that the New Republic would do what the Imperials could not, getting rid of a major threat to the Imperial plan in the Outer Rim. Not to mention, given her vindictiveness of taking revenge on those who messed with the overall Imperial plan, such as Dr. Pershing for example, I wouldn't be surprised if she had something up her sleeve to hit back at the Mandalorians for what they did to Gideon. So who knows, perhaps Kane might use this opportunity and her newfound position to do just exactly that. Another thing that she could be up to during this time is that she could start building her own spy network within the New Republic. Now that the Amnesty program has allowed for former Imperials to infiltrate the New Republic system and bureaucracy, she could very well leverage this newfound position to create a network of information and espionage. It would actually be the perfect opportunity for the Empire to develop its eyes and ears within the New Republic and feed information back to the Shadow Council. And I think that by the time Season 4 rolls around, this is exactly Exactly what we will see with Alaya Kane, now the head of an extensive imperial network rooted deep within the heart of the New Republic government. And I think this idea of Kane setting up a network for the Empire within the New Republic would fit very well with the existing canon. In fact, as we know later on, First Order operatives within the New Republic would exacerbate political tensions between New Republic members. By lobbying for a centralization of power within the New Republic, they knowingly antagonize outlying systems, especially those within the Outer Rim. This antagonization of certain systems effectively weakened the New Republic in preparation for the First Order's return. And so what we could see with Kane is essentially the precursor to these events, that she is now building the foundation of what will eventually be a system of First Order operatives operating within the New Republic. And I think this would be a very cool idea to run with, especially given that the exploration of what exactly happened, politically speaking, within the New Republic, and the days leading up to the First Order's return is still relatively unexplored, save for a few books here and there. And so to explore this political dynamic in live action, especially as we move on to Season 4 of The Mandalorian or even further, would be a fascinating concept to consider and really flesh out what exactly happened during this time period. And I definitely think that Eli Kane will be the future or at least one of the future faces of the Empire. Given that she was first introduced in Season 2 with a very brief moment and now with a greater expanded role in Season 3 with essentially a full episode dedicated to her, you can bet that she will have a pretty crucial role to play down the line. In fact, in Season 4 of The Mandalorian, I would go as far as to say that she just might be the secondary if not the primary antagonist at least for a short moment. 
Season 3 in particular has really taken the time to demonstrate what sort of character she is, illustrating her viciousness, her cunning, and more importantly, how ruthless she is as a villain. And with her situated so closely to New Republic leaders, it makes her the perfect character to wreak havoc within the New Republic, almost in a sort of Palpatine way of doing things. Besides, I highly doubt that the showrunners of The Mandalorian would dedicate an entire episode to her if it weren't set up for bigger things in later seasons, especially given that episode 3 had almost absolutely no bearing on what occurred in the finale, it does seem like a weird outlier in the grand scheme of season 3, so that sort of leads me to conclude that episode 3 of season 3 of The Mandalorian is definitely a setup episode for season 4 and the things to come. I wouldn't be surprised if Kane started to become a little bit more more influential within the Imperial system as well, especially since Thrawn would make very good use of her. Given that she's in the perfect position to feed Thrawn crucial bits of information about the New Republic, I wouldn't be surprised if she played in that sort of role either in The Mandalorian Season 4 or in a different show. It's also worth noting that the way things left off in Season 3, with the Mandalorian and Grogu now closely working with the New Republic, albeit in an unofficial capacity, it could link back to Kane in some way. It actually provides the perfect opportunity for Mando and Grogu to perhaps uncover the Imperial spy network that is running in the New Republic. By working closely with the New Republic and Carson Teva, they could eventually uncover this Imperial conspiracy that is ongoing within the New Republic. And I think this could very well be the future plot, or at least part of it, in Season 4 of The Mandalorian. It would offer a different pace and tone to the usual gunslinger action of The Mandalorian while still keeping it grounded through its perspectives of Grogu and Mando. Especially if you consider that should Kane find out about Mando and Grogu working for the New Republic, she could try and set up traps and threats to get rid of the two of them. And so perhaps Mando and Grogu have to work out who exactly is masterminding these attacks and these plots against them during their travels as New Republic Rangers. So I don't know, I think it's a pretty cool thought to consider and I think it would create some tension and drama for Season 4 of The Mandalorian, but you know, there is a lot of plot ideas out there and I highly doubt that this will be a central piece. Besides, with Thrawn approaching soon, we might not really even have the space to explore all of this. And so the show could very well decide to relegate her to a backseat role with just her being a spy and informant for the bigger characters like Thrawn. So who knows, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, that's all for this video. Make sure to leave a comment down below to let me know what you think. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. I'm the Lost Acolyte and I have spoken.